All right, so if you watched the last video, uh, you noticed that you know I added these and I added the animation for the control valves. Uh, I've added uh, AVO1, AVO2, AVO3, AVO4. Um, also to, uh, when adding these, if you wanna come down, like it say for instance, if you added a text box, it's just a text field. Um, what you do is you come down here, if you don't want any border, you can choose no border, which is what I did, so that I can just get a the, a name right there without any kind of indication so it's e very easy for the operator to see um, also to uh, where we tested the start batch and stop batch I realized that I did make uh, a mistake and I used the wrong button I should be using a momentary button so I dragged the momentary button over and we're going to go ahead and change this so momentary button we're going to call this start bat or start batch batch pb and then down on the actual name so um, under the name right here it says we'll just call this start batch like we did okay so we can shrink this down and now i need to add a uh you know an actual tag to it right so we can come over here and drag this tag to it and then come over here and look at that and then go ahead and show that and then come over here to our controls and see if this indicated so what we can do is we can shrink down the controls to see if it does start and we need to shrink down this as well. So, so it does work and it goes right off. Okay, so it's instead of the constant writing, it's it's just a, it's basically just a momentary button, right? So <clears throat> we need to replace all of our buttons. We need to stop running. We need to replace of all our all of our buttons. So we have a start batch, right? Um, for this too, you know, when it comes down to it, you can, how you want to center things. Um, I do like to center the, the, the text on, on things like that. Um, you know, coming in here, like control values and stuff like that, the control indicator, um, you can easily see that it's going to be the start batch. It's going to be the value, you know, and then indicator again, that's, that's tied in there. Control value again start batch is it's coming in here doing the value um you you can easily see that right <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and copy this paste it right there and we're going to do our stop button and see where it says the, the mnemonics of it or the actual name this is going to be stop push button okay and then down here, um, we'll just call this stop batch. So stop batch. <clears throat> now we will have to change the actual um, two things that we added here. This is instead of start, we're going to be on the stop. And so we'll change that. Um, we'll come over here the, as far as the indicator. We want that back on the stop and then we'll value put the value there. And then we need a reset. Okay, so as you see in my code, let's make this bigger. I do have a first out fault, which again, we should be able to reset, but let's see, there may be something in there that we can't. So let's add another uh, momentary button. Okay, so let's actually just copy and paste this, make it easier. That way they're the same. And then we'll call this the reset button are in this case this is for our records we'll call that fault reset push button and then down here we'll put fault reset <clears throat> and then we'll just make sure that that does fit and what we want to do is now I need to add that in here so the fault reset so that's an 
that's a tag that I need to add real quick. So we'll browse, we'll come over here, add to device, add from device. And we're looking for HMI, I believe it's HMI, uh, yeah, reset PB, PB right here. So let's add that into the actual application, hit okay. And then what we'll do is we'll use that for our control indicator. So we'll have HMI reset button, come over here. Uh, again, you necessarily don't have to do that method in like this, this right here, but I'm adding it for extra precaution. Uh, again, you can just drag and drop. So <clears throat> in this case, we have a fault reset. Let's see if it does reset the code. It did reset my first out fault. So now we can actually start a batch. Um, now keep in mind, I do have uh, the mixing controls. I have AVO one on in manual. So let's go ahead and use the system to start a batch. And then, so what should happen when we start a batch is it comes in here and cuts that on. Okay, so now we have, we actually are feeding out AVO1. So we do have a problem, AVO3 right here. So we need to change this. Uh, and this is pointed, this is AVO3. So unless AVO3 is being told to cut on, and it might be, I may have my valves backwards. So just keep in mind, <clears throat> yeah, I do have my valves backwards from the old application. So just keep in mind that um, that is part of the process. AVO3 was right here on top of the mixing tank. So what I need to do is shrink this down just a little bit, put change this, actually just move this down. Let's just move this down here. It can, you, and you can see my, my batch is actually running right now. So this is AVO3. Uh, AVO4, so AVO4 is up here. And then AVO5, <clears throat> AVO5 is down on the bottom. But you can see the valves are working. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this as AVO5 this right here value okay and then we'll come down here copy this paste change this to no border and then change it from we want 05 and then we want 05 okay so we are adding when we want to change it to well, let's just say no border. Okay, so then we have everything there. So currently you can see now, <clears throat> and I'm trying to think of my old application because that's everything is working as far as the current corn syrup is now going into the mixing tank um, and nothing is on AVO3. So I'll have to research that but the good side to it is, is again, what I wanted to show in this video is that I was using the wrong buttons. Okay. So if I wanted to stop the batch right now, the batch does stop. You can see everything did stop accordingly. Um, and again, coming back, it's, if I start the batch back, it knows how much of the master batch it has already. And it knows how much corn syrup it still needs to add. So it's going to pick back up right where it left off. And again, I do have these valves probably in the wrong spot and I will get that worked out, but I have to reference my old application for that. Uh, but for the, the sake of what we were doing and building the application as we built it before previously, what we're trying to do is go ahead and show some of the key, key elements, right? Um, and this is using again, ignition designer. So we went from factory talk SE to ignition designer and but I'm basically migrating this and, and using this as a stepping stone to do the, the exact same thing I did with the factory talk SE is use it, use the batching station project as something to grow on and as something to, you know, make it work just like it used to. All right. 
So with that said, we have 16% in the, in the tank. Let's go ahead and stop the batch and we'll call this video good. Uh, for um, everything that we're doing so far, you know, if you haven't watched the prior videos leading up to this, again, that will greatly help you understand where we're at, some of the things we've done and you know, how we did animation, how we did other things. This video was more about me, you know, I did use the wrong buttons. I just wanted to show you that you do make mistakes when you do integrate. So when it comes down to it, hopefully that did help a lot of people and we'll see you guys on the next one.